hey guys welcome back to my channel so in this video we will do a little bit different so today we will talk about uh, automation using rest api with netapp cluster so we are going to see how to connect a netapp cluster using rest api using a python library called uh, requests and uh, rest api is a another way of connecting to netapp cluster to do automations so there are various scenarios you can think of uh, where you can uh, implement uh, rest api connectivity and perform automations but in this video we will talk a very basic thing on uh, how you can connect uh, to your netapp cluster using rest api so first of all you have to understand how to read the rest api document so now if you have a netapp cluster and if you have the cluster management ip then type the ip address in the browser and give slash docs slash api so with this help of uh, url you will be able to enter into the documentation so if you have not logged into the cluster it will definitely ask for your username and password just give it and you will be landed to this particular page now entire documents on rest api you can get it here so you can see first segment is document and the second segment is uh, the endpoints so endpoints is nothing but they are the http url of the netapp cluster and every endpoint provide you some information so for example this is a get request cloud slash target so this will provide you the cloud related information on netapp cluster now this is cluster now you can see a get options here you can get cluster level of information now similarly you will have other endpoints also like networking will give you networking related information and you have svm so which will give you the vserver level of information so in this video let's stick to the basic and we will see the cluster information of this particular netapp so what we can do is that first copy this cluster and open a new tab and again we will see how the information looks like in browser so similarly you have to type uh, the netapp cluster management uh, ip address then type api and then type cluster so this will basically will give you the information related to your cluster now you can see here this is a json format output and uh, if you will see closely the first option is name and the value is cluster one so which is showing the correct information now how can we fetch this information using python request library let's see so i am going to use visual studio code because it is a very good uh, developing or a coding tool you can say now i have a folder called netapp rest api let me create a file over here let me name it as netapp api dot py py is because we are going to use python and first thing first we'll have to import requests now this request library may not be installed so you can install that using pip install requests so i'm not going to do that because it's it's already installed now next thing let's define a function called netapp api so within this uh, function we will write our entire code so first of all we'll have to create a variable where we will put the endpoint of the api that we are going to call so in our case it was a cluster endpoint so let me just copy that and uh, paste it here now second thing is that we have to define a header so header is basically will be sent along with the request so there are a lot of options you can provide but uh, for connecting to netapp we have one options called authorization so let me just type authorization and the value will be within quotes and the value will be basic and we'll have to pass username and password of the netapp cluster now basic is the basic authentication that netapp supports there are various other authentication also for example bearer but uh, to connect to your individual cluster basic authentication is required now the thing is here is that the username and password i have typed it in a simple format or the text format this will fail 
because uh, with basic authentication you will have to supply the username and password in base64 encoded format so now you copy this uh, particular username and password and make sure there is a colon between the username and password copy that and uh, go to a website called techieblogging.com so basically i will put the link in the description of this particular website and uh, this will basically provide us the encoded format of our string so once you open this page go a little bit down under this base 64 encode just uh, paste the information that is your username colon your password click on base 64 encode and it will give you a value copy that value and paste it here now our header section is completed now we will do request dot get so get is basically used when you are just fetching some information post is used when you are going to create something and there are various others request also if you'll go through the document then definitely you will get all the things based on your requirement now this particular get function uses the url now URL is nothing but the endpoint that we are going to call and uh, second thing we'll have to pass the header that is headers is equal to header so this is where the authentication will happen and again we have to specify a arguments called uh, verify is equal to false your so if you have observed whenever you give the information of your NetApp cluster in the browser it will give you a page and it will ask you to click on advanced tab so that particular process will be skipped if you are uh, specifying this option now request dot get we got it but uh, let's put this in a variable output so whatever requests or whatever output we are getting from this API call, it will be stored in the output variable. Now let's just print uh, the variable output and then we will call this function NetApp API. Now let's run this and see what is the output that we are getting from this script. So the script has ran and you can see the response that we got is 200. So if you are getting a response 200, then everything is fine and it is working as expected. But what is the output? Now to get the output in a JSON format, you will have to print that as output.json and then if you will run the script again, then you will be able to see the proper information. So here you can see all the information we have got it. Now, if you want to access a specific information from this whole JSON output, then what to do? Then you can use a function called dot get and within that uh, get you have to pass a argument and that too within double quotes and uh, within double quotes you have to mention the key for which the value you want so for example i want the name of the cluster so the key here is name so i will just uh, put name here and now if i will run the script then we are supposed to get the name of the cluster that is cluster 01 now again you can save this to a another variable that is cluster name equals to and uh, then you can print the cluster name here so you will get the same thing here that is a cluster one so similarly if you want to use any other information for example i want to use the version key to know the version of the particular cluster then instead of name i will give a version and uh, if i run the script i am getting another json format output and it is nothing but a dictionary as well now again if you want to know the full version then again you have to use the get function here once again and within that you will have to use full because under the full key only you are getting the full version of the NetApp cluster so let me run that and uh, we will be able to see only the output that is NetApp release 9.6 so this is how you can uh, connect to your NetApp cluster using REST API so you just have to play around with the REST API documentation and do practice and you will be able to write much more complex uh, scripts using NetApp REST API. You can even automate your uh, share creation, volume creation, everything is there. So just explore and that's all for this video. Hope you got a basic idea on REST API NetApp. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get a notification on my next video.